Uh, today we're focusing on CRM, but specifically the sales automation piece of that. So lead management, opportunity management, uh, converting contacts, et cetera. So let's dive right in. We'll start with dashboards. Uh, we'll get into lead management, actually tracking activities, which can span across, of course, different documents and um, different types of CRM activities like leads, like opportunities. Um, and then we'll also talk about taking opportunities, uh, using them for pipeline force forecasting, and then finally creating sales orders out of opportunities. And the last segue is a little bit separate, but that's on the case management and support side. So let's dive right in. Um, like I said, I typically like to start with something like a salesperson dashboard. The salesperson is a good individual view, so you can you know, have your sales reps teed up with these individual dashboards that are showing them their new leads throughout the course of the day. Um, you know, what are the new nurtured leads that I haven't called in the last 30 days? Uh, what opportunities do I have closing within the next 60 days? So it allows you to not only as a salesperson get this clean view of your data and what you're responsible for, but of course throughout the course of the day as maybe perhaps someone is assigning you a task or a new lead comes in off the website, because these are real-time dashboards, you'll be able to utilize them to stay on top of that activity contrast with a sales manager dashboard just because that's of course now showing this from a team level rather than an individual level so how can the whole sales or excuse me how can the sales manager get a view of his entire team and everybody that he's responsible for for over a certain periods of time uh, versus just from a salesperson dashboard which was very much more specific to that individual user There is also a dashboard built in there called this customer view. Um, if you remember, one of the features that we released in version 2018R1 was dashboard parameters. So this can be applied to any dashboard. So the customer view is basically saying, you know, we want to take here we're seeing all of the customers out there. So all of the overdue opportunities, all of the orders that need to be shipped across all of our customers. Um, but now you can take this parameter here and you can filter down into one individual customer. So if you are a customer service representative and you need to quickly get a view of just one customer's data, you can grab that customer and your dashboard will refresh to only include the information about that customer or whatever the parameter that you have established is. It can, doesn't have to be specific to a customer. Um, I've used some examples with sales operations where you could view um, you know, sales activity by individual sales rep rather than by the whole team. So there's quite a number of ways to use parameters. This is giving a great picture from left to right of how the CRM is interacting and how the data is flowing. Over on the left-hand side, these are entry points for leads, as you can see. So Outlook plugin, that uh, it's more of an optional feature. Uh, the mobile application is another way leads can enter the system. Import scenarios, it can help for things like mass updates of data, um, mass entry of leads. Perhaps you're at a trade show and you've accumulated 150 leads on a spreadsheet. You can then import those into the system and create those 150 lead records automatically and not have to go through and do all of that in a manual way. And of course, websites as well. If you're using Commerce Edition, um, or if you put a form out on your website, the leads can enter the system that way. So we're going to lead management next. Uh, like I said, you can do it from the salesperson dashboard if you'd like. Um, it's just a nice, easy way. I can say, as a salesperson now, I see I have my three new leads, and I can drill right into that to start to take action on them. So I get to my inquiry here that's showing me my three new leads. At this point, I can grab any one of these leads to start working with them, so I'll just double click. All right, so when the lead first comes in, uh, the status, of course, is going to be something that your sales team can utilize to, you know, if you lose a lead, then you don't want to continue to have it in your queue. So you can use these statuses to help you manage if leads should be paid attention to or not. 
Um, you might have saw a moment ago, there's a number of ways to build inquiries. So if you'd like to see, you know, just the leads that have come in this week or leads that have come in within the last 30 days, of course, we know that's possible with inquiries throughout Acumatica. Um, the owner, you can go in and manually assign an owner, but assignment and approval maps, that is how you would automatically assign leads, which is, of course, the purpose of this demonstration, sales automation. How can we make sure that any new leads that come into the system are getting sent automatically to the appropriate sales rep, and we don't have to go in and decide based on this condition, it should go to this sales representative. You might want to break it up by state or by zip code. So when a new lead comes in uh, from the state of California, we know that it needs to be assigned to Josh or whoever that owner of that state is. Uh, the source field is just another good one to call out because a lot of people will want to know, you know, based on the money we've spent on marketing, what sources are actually proving to bring in revenue for our business. So they might want to go back um, and do some CRM reporting around the sources of their leads um, and sometimes the sources of their actual sales. The contact and address information is, of course, key to CRM. The contact information will be captured automatically from wherever it comes in from, um, and it can, of course, be imported through the system as well, which we discussed. Activity tracking can be used throughout the course of Acumatica, so throughout most areas in the system, you can track activities. So if you have multiple people accessing that record, they can take a look at the CRM activities and they know exactly who has touched it, when, and what had occurred during that time. Um, so single source of visibility is key. Um, and you can also use activities to track time. So you can actually invoice against the time that was spent on those activities if needed. So task management, um, if you'd like to go in here and create a new task. So if you create a task, you can put a start date and an end date in there. You can assign tasks to yourself to give you reminders, uh, you know, when to follow up with certain leads or opportunities. You can assign tasks to others. So if there's somebody on your team or someone within the organization that you would need to assign a task to, you can do that as well. Um, these tasks can also be managed again at the dashboard level. So most people will have a dashboard widget that shows them all of the tasks that they have to accomplish today, this week, this month, and even this year. So you can really utilize those dates um, to hold yourself accountable and stay organized when you're using the CRM. Um, of course, you can actually link to projects as well. Um, you can add in emails at this point, you, um, so you can add emails and send and manage emails directly from Acumatica. Um, if you are using that Outlook plugin, it will also be a bi-directional feed. So if emails from this lead came in to your Outlook, you could actually just have them stack up directly on this activities tab. Um, and finally, if we go to just this add activity drop down, there's a number of other ones that are in there. If you'd just like to make a quick note on the record to, again, remind yourself or give someone else a clue as to some information as to what's going on with that lead. Um, if you'd like to track your phone calls, actually log work items in here. So work items can be thought of as tasks within tasks. Um, and what I mentioned is these can be used for time tracking and billing. So specifically on the case management side, uh, perhaps you spent an hour on a certain support case or on a certain activity, you can go in, you can say you'd like to track that time. Uh, maybe I spent two hours on this in total, but only one hour of it was billable time. You decide what that billable time is. Again, if there is, you know, a SAO or another project out there that you need to link this to, you can do it at that point. And when you actually, you can set rules that say when we release the case, or excuse me, release the activity, we'd like to automatically release an invoice, or you can choose to do it, you know, at the end of the month, do a monthly roll up of all the time activities and bill against that. So there's a few different billing rules you can use if you would like to actually use time tracking for billing as well. Big on the case side, probably not as much with leads. All right, so we talked about our activity management. You can attach files, images here as well if needed. So the next thing is most likely you will want to take your lead and convert it into an opportunity. 
from that lead record, you can now go in and create an opportunity directly out of there. So it will carry over um, things like the contact information, any data that is needed for that opportunity, so you don't have to rekey it back in. Um, so let's take now that next action, which is to create the opportunity. And I go up to actions, create an opportunity. So now we're saying, yes, this lead has engaged with us, but we have identified that they are perhaps ready to buy from us. So we want to start tracking this against our pipeline so we know what type of sales we can expect in the future. That's the overall arching uh, meaning of opportunity management. So we see here, first of all, the information gets carried over. So the contact information, uh, whatever was already included on that lead that needs to go on the opportunity. Uh, you will see that it's going to default, if I look under my details, details tab here, we see first of all, the probability is going to default to zero. And that's because right now we're just in the prospect stage. What your sales representatives or your CSRs, they can take these stages and, again, begin to move the opportunities through different stages as certain phases are occurring. Uh, but what you'll see here is my probability in the prospect stage is just going to be zero. But as I move through uh, to something like solution, you'll see that gets bumped up to 40. So as your sales representatives, your CSRs are managing many different opportunities against many different business accounts, you will always be able to have that roll up into overall pipeline forecasting per salesperson and per sales team. Now, I'm just going to save this for a moment so that we have the basics about this opportunity. If I'd like to add any details in here, any additional information about what they're interested in, I can do that. Um, we talked about you know, attaching different files. So if I need to physically go in here, attach a file, attach some notes, I can absolutely do that. But most likely, you'll want to start attaching products at this point. So because they're actually getting ready to buy. Um, you know, it might be non-stock products. It might be stock products. If you're maybe planning to go out and do some service, you might be looking at non-stock versus the stock items I'm using here. Uh, but we'll say that they're interested in buying about a quantity of five laptops from us. You can use attributes to say, well, this particular business is looking for electronics and computers. And then you can go back and again, report on those attributes if needed. I won't take you through each one of the tabs and fields. It's not the purpose of our demo today, um, but I did mention if you need to attach a quote to your opportunity at this point, you can absolutely do that. Um, I will skip that part of our demonstration today, and I'm just gonna go up to actions, and I am going to create a sales order. Now, these leads or prospects actually need to be converted into accounts. Um, so when I go to create sales order, it's going to tell me it's not associated with their a customer account yet. So what I need to do first is say actions and create account. So that is saying, yes, this person is in fact ready to buy from us. Uh, we want to create a customer account within Acumatica. I say create, it pops it all into my business account record, and I just say save here. Now, one more important point to make, and I think people get a little bit hung up on some of the terminology and the differences between records. A business account with an Acumatica can be, really think of it as a profile of a vendor, a customer, an employee. So a business account can be a, basically a profile of an individual or an organization. A customer is somebody that actually purchases from you. So this is not an employee, this is not a vendor, this is a customer. So finally, I'm just going to say convert this into a customer and I will say save. And now what you can do is you can go back to that original opportunity that you were working with and you can convert it directly into a sales order from there. So you were right at the top. All right. So finally, not only is Acumatica a CRM, but we break down that wall that usually comes at the end of the CRM. So if you're using something like Salesforce, you can really only get to this opportunity point. With Acumatica now, you can create your sales order. So you can actually take 
everything that you started with from sales automation, from the leads that you have gathered, the opportunities you've managed, the quotes you've issued, and it all rolls into your inventory, your order management, your fulfillment. So that's, of course, the key differentiator with Acumatica's CRM. Um, and of course, I didn't talk about it, but at any point, you can go up in actions, email out your sales order, email out your opportunity, email out your quote. Um, in the case of sales automation, you don't need to send an email manually each time a certain condition is met. You can create automatic notifications. You know, when the status of this opportunity is confirmed, we would like to email it out to the client. 